So today we're gonna to have a walk around the showroom and we're gonna talk about some of the amazing cars that we currently have in stock. Some of the cars that we currently have are so special that we've never publicly advertised them and this will be the first time that we've ever shared them with anyone. So where do we start? I know where we probably should start, which is this baby. Porsche GT1 race car, chassis number 117. This is the only Porsche GT1 race car that's been converted for road use and is currently road registered. There is another car that is currently going through the conversion process at the moment, but this is the only one that has been converted to date. Uh, a very special car. Uh, this is a car that we bought for stock and we wanted to return it to its Daytona livery, which is what we, uh, we have been doing recently. Um, it's been beautifully restored by Lanzanti uh, in 2015, uh, a restoration that costs somewhere in the region of around about 300,000 pounds. Lanzanti, as I think a lot of you know, are very good friends of ours, have the utmost respect for them. Their work is just tremendous, second to none. And the attention to detail that Dean and his team go to on every one of their projects is just astonishing. And when you have a look around this car, you get a great feel for that quality of work. Uh, this is a car that, a, a GT1 race car, they built less than, there's less than 10 of them uh, of the customer race cars that exist today. Um, this is the most winningest example. This is a car that we don't intend to publicly market. We're going to carefully select uh, some potential clients and offer the car for sale quietly. So this is the first time that we've ever shared this particular car with anyone. So uh, it's, uh, you, get the, you, you get that opportunity today. Uh, Ferrari 500 Mondial. Uh, this is a car that we've recently sold actually. We've sold it for the second time in probably three or four years. A uh, great car. Uh, you know, what is there to say about it? I think we may have touched on it before. It's uh, you know, a full matching number car, beautifully restored, uh, came from great ownership and it's off to great ownership. 288 GTO, uh, Ferrari F40. These two particular cars are cars that I own privately and uh, love them to pieces. Don't really get to use them as much as I, I would like to, but uh, two very special cars. Then Ferrari 500 Supervast. Now, I hope some of you have managed to watch the video on the restoration. Uh, this is a car that I bought probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. Uh, sent it to my Italian family, I described them as, which is Brandoli in Italy. Uh, Brandoli are probably the best restorers of Ferraris on the face of the planet. Uh, they, their background is uh, the father worked at Scaglietti. The quality of the work that they carry out on bodies to cars are really are second to none. And this car is a great example of that. It's one of, I mean, I think you're probably all well aware that we love a restoration. I consider myself a bit of a project man. Um, and this would be one of the finest restored cars that I've probably ever seen because Pininfarina body cars are much more difficult to restore. There's much more intricate details involved when you look at these chrome vents than what there is on say a Scaglietti bodied car um, and it takes a little bit or probably takes a lot longer but Brandley done a fantastic job uh, it's a it's a car that's presented in its original colors it's one of the few right end drive examples uh, every little detail on the car from the leather interior is the period correct Volmol Connolly leather interior. Everything about the engine is period correct. There's no, you know, mod cons being installed. Um, 
it's a no excuse car, classic A certified. You know, we expect this to be sold imminently. Um, we then move on to this Ferrari 246 GTS. We do love a Dino here. Um, this is a right hand drive car. There weren't many right hand drive GTSs uh, built. There was somewhere in the region of about 240 cars. Um, the original color of this car was Nocciola, and it, it was born in what a lot of people believe was the ultimate configuration for a Dino, which was Daytona seats. You see a lot of Dinos these days upgraded to Daytona seats when they were originally born with just standard seats. Um, and Daytona, for some of you that are not aware what that means, is basically this styling where you have the, the fingers and the holes in the fingers in between uh, the panels on the seats. Um, it's much more attractive. Uh, people talk about chairs and flares. I love chairs and flares. However, chairs is the Daytona seats, flares is on the wheel arches. And there is many people that think that the flared wheel arches spoil the design of the car. And that's why this configuration of which was the Daytona seats and the normal um, wheel arches is considered by many as the ultimate configuration. Only eight right-hand drive GTSs were built like this. The original color was Nocciola. I wish it was in worse condition because if it was in worse condition, I could justify going through the pain, the time, the cost of returning it to its original color because this car would look just so cool in Nocciola with the Daytona seats, which is the, it was in black. So, you know, the hazelnut color with the black interior. Great ownership this car's got, something like it had 30 years in single ownership, no excuses, complete matching numbers. It's nearly in too good of condition because if it was a little bit worse, it would be going straight to Italy or straight to our friends, Nick Cartwright, and we would, uh, be putting it back to what I deem as a much more attractive color than retail red. But you know, everyone likes things a little bit different. Now this is a very special car. This is a 275 GTBC Competizione, chassis number 9041. From a distance, or even just aesthetically looking at the car, it doesn't look much different to a normal 275 GTB. But these 9000 series competition cars are absolutely completely different. This is a monster of a car. They built 12 of them. Uh, only 12 cars were ever produced. Only four of those 12 were right-hand drive. This is the purest of all of those right-hand drive cars. And there's probably only one left-hand drive car that can compete or be compared with its purity. No race history, which is probably the reason why it stayed so pure, but absolutely original. I mean, we stripped this car down to bare metal. It's recently come back from restoration and was restored by Ferrari Classic A. The quality of the restoration is just fantastic. Um, complete matching number car, uh, just, they're a very different car to a normal 275 GTB. The aluminium is a much thinner gauge aluminium, uh, dry sump engine, the compression ratio is different. This is kind of like a 250 LM motor in a very thin, lightweight 275 body. In period, um, the results of these competition cars were, you know, fantastic. They won the Classic Le Mans in 66 and 67. They're a very special car. They command a humongous premium over a normal 275 GTB. They just don't aesthetically look very different, but once you start them and once you drive them, it's something that's very special. Move, staying on to 275s, but moving on to a, a, a different model. This is a left-hand drive GTB4. Chassis number 10413. One of the six cars, four cams that were painted new in Verde Pino. This has had one owner for 45 years, 46 years actually. 
I bought it from a gentleman uh, in the Bronx, uh, the Bronx of New York, uh, really interesting guy, a super nice guy to deal with actually. He had bought the car at, as being a very young man. He'd been through the process of restoring the car some 20 years ago. The, car, the car's restoration has stood up extremely well. He hasn't used it that much since it's been restored. Um, original colors are Verde Pino over black leather. Uh, it was born with the alloys. Some people put the Barani wheels on them. Actually, if you look at the Barani wheels on the competition car, you'll see these are very different. Number one, they're not a chrome finish, they're painted, and they're what they call outside laced. So competition cars had the spokes on the outside to give extra um, support with the, with the cars racing. So that's a great car. And then moving on to another 275 um, GTB4, also in Verde Pino, but the steering wheel's on the opposite side. This is a right-hand drive car. This is the only right-hand drive GTB4 um, ever finished in Verde Pino. There was only other one other right-hand drive 275 that was finished in this color from new, which was uh, a short-nosed car that was delivered new to uh, George Harrison. That car, I, I believe, no longer exists. Uh, this is a car that was sold to Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton owned the, cars for, uh, owned the car for several years. I have been trying to buy this car for something like 12 years, um, 12, 11, 12, 13 years. It was pretty persistent. I got there eventually. When I bought the car, it was in silver. It looked fantastic. It's the lowest mileage right-hand drive GTB4 in existence but I felt like it needed to go back to its original color. So we sent the car to Italy. Uh, we sent the car to our friends at Cremonini. Again, in Italy, you know, I, I love Bonini for the mechanics, Sauro for the mechanics, or Cremonini for the cosmetics and Brandoli for the cosmetics. But we have so many cars over there that we have to share the love around. Um, the, the work on this car, they, the remit they had was that cosmetically the car had to be returned to its original uh, color combination, but the whole of the interior we had to retain because it's all original interior. It's only done 19,000 miles from new. Around the steering wheel, it still has the lead seal that was installed when the cars were new, just as a, as a sign off from the factory. Uh, chassis number 10, 169. It was born with electric windows. It was born with alloys, a bit like 10413 and not the Barani wire wheels. The other special order options on this car was that the first owner wanted to delete the Cavallino badge on the rear. So we just have the Ferrari scripture and without the Cavallino badge, I think this is a really special car. For me, it's I know all of these right-hand drive GTB4s very well. I know all their histories intimately, the current state that they're all in today, their mileages. And when you look around this car and you see it retains all of its original interior, all its original glass, its headlamp covers, its headlights, everything about this car is totally original, full matching numbers, but it's just been freshly cosmetically done. I would say a total refurbishment and it's beautiful. So moving on, Bentley four and a half liter. I think a, a few of you know about the history of this car. This was the ex Johnny Green four and a half liter. Um, had a humongous restoration at Graham Moss. And I think some people had to sell maybe their kidneys to pay for the restoration. It cost that much money, but it's just a very special car and that's a, a bit of a keeper. So I don't expect that to be going anywhere soon. Speaking of special Bentleys, now Bentley blower. So this is a normal four and a half liter and then this is a supercharged four and a half liter. Both are Vandenpla um, four seater open tourers. Both are fabric bodied cars. Now, if you're going to buy a pre-war Bentley, a WO vintage Bentley, you really want 
a fabric body car compared with a panel body car. It's just something that adds a bit more character. It's very much in theme of the period. I think it's aesthetically a much better looking car with a fabric bodied. Now, this particular car is regarded as probably the most original of all of the 50 blower Bentleys. Now, of the 50 blowers, there's only 18 that can still claim their full matching number status today. So full matching number doesn't just mean it's got its original engine, or it doesn't just mean it's got its original body, but it has both. Then um, when you look around this car, it's fresh from restoration, again at Graham Moss. He's fantastic, does a great job down there. Uh, it got restored over a number of years, but when, when you ask Graham about this car, he, he always emphasizes that it was a preservation, not a restoration. And I challenge him on that because I say, Graham, how can this be a preservation? Like, look at it. This car never left the factory looking as perfect as it looks today. And you can't tell me that this is not restored. And, you know, he's quick to remind and say, no, but we didn't replace much of the interior. It retains all of its original leather on the door panels, lots of its leather on the seats. It retains its original fabric body. And you can see that it's just been re-lacquered over to preserve it. And it retains all of its original mechanical components. So even the ancillary items that are associated to the engine, everything has been taken off and restored, nothing replaced. It's just a very special car. Only seven of those 18 matching number cars are fabric bodied cars. Uh, this is a car that we've had for sale for a few months. I'm, I'm quite shocked it hasn't sold as of yet, to be honest, because this is a car that if you were looking for one and you wanted to buy one, somebody should really, what's the phrase, run across the road naked to buy it. So I, uh, I'm hoping that we find a good home for that sometime soon because it deserves it. Now, going from one extreme to the other, we can go from the Bentley Blower straight into the Bugatti Chiron. It's kind of the same family these days, isn't it? This is a uh, one owner, single owner from New Example that's done around about 1500 miles. It's finished in the French blue with the exposed blue carbon rear of the body. Uh, you know, it's got the beautiful matching color interior, huge spec. I think this is great value for money, actually. Chassis number 795051, I think. Um, and this car costs new around about three million pounds. And we are asking for it two million pounds plus VAT. So 2.4 million. Why it's really super attractive is because of that plus VAT. It's a VAT qualifying car, which is very rare to see on modern supercars for sale these days. Most cars are bought privately and you can't claim the VAT, VAT back. This car was bought through a business. The VAT was claimed back. And then we are reselling the car with the VAT, uh, adding the VAT on, so it's plus VAT. So if you were an EU-based buyer or an rest of the world buyer, not UK based. You can buy this car from us for two million pounds. And I challenge anybody at all to look at anywhere in the world. Number one, that is extremely competitively priced for a Chiron. I don't want to use the word cheap because we definitely don't sell cheap cars. If you have a look around here, it's quite an expensive visit if you ever come to us, um, but it's fantastic value for money. So we won't use the word cheap, but somebody should really snap that car up and snap it up quickly. Another modern car, this is a Ferrari SF90. Uh, Ferrari's latest sports car stroke supercar, the most powerful production Ferrari to date. It's a delivery mileage example, one owner from new, right hand drive, UK supplied, again, I think really good value for money. This is uh, cost new 476,000 and we're selling it for 455,000 and it's delivery mileage. We then move on to another supercar, a car that I think is dated tremendously well. You know, when I look at a Porsche 918 Spyder, 
even a Ferrari LaFerrari, and I am Mr. Ferrari, I love Ferraris, live, breathe, you know, just Ferrari is a huge part of my life. A McLaren P1, I think has probably dated better than those other two cars of the Holy Trinity. Um, this is a one owner from New Example, uh, UK supplied, came from a fantastic home, chassis number 16, if I remember correctly. Um, just great color combination. In this black paint, you have kind of an orange speckle that costs a lot of money. It's an MSO finish. And then you've got the orange inserts into the interior. You have the orange brake calipers. The service history on this car is just, well, it's impeccable. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a modern supercar with such low mileage. It's done 4,000 miles from new. It was delivered new in 2013, and it's been serviced in 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 2021. And its most recent service in 2021 was taken to Lanzanti and Lanzanti are now an official McLaren service center. I feel like I'm one of their PR ambassadors actually so far, but um, they went through this car with a fine tooth comb. They're so used to working on McLaren F1s that they've used that um, discipline from their F1 inspections and services and, uh, and, and um, you know, taking the same rules that apply to that as what they, they used on the P1 and they've been right through the car, huge service build, but it's absolutely on the button and ready to go. So somebody, oh, and by the way, the price of that car, £1,250,000. I think when you look at the price of a Carrera GT now that has just gone skyrocket, an F40, skyrocket, 288 GTO, skyrocket. I think it makes a Chiron look very cheap. You know, how can that car, a two, that car cost new three million pounds and we're asking two million plus VAT. And then you think a McLaren P1 is one and a quarter million. You know, that's a lot less than a Ferrari F40 these days. And, um, you know, I'm not saying it's more special than an F40, but that will always be a special car. And I think that's got loads of room to grow. So if you're ever gonna buy one as well, a single owner UK supplied car, what's better than that? Now, let's move over this way. Aston Martin. We have had so many great Aston Martins of late. I mean, really special Aston Martins that we're gonna share with you today. We're gonna start here because I absolutely love this car. I absolutely love the color. I bought this car because of its original color. When I bought it, it was a very well restored car, finished in a dark blue with a tan leather interior. And when I looked into the history of the car and I found out that the original color was Primrose, you know, a Primrose DB4 GT. There was only two of the 75 cars that was ever born in this color. This is chassis number 0121. Uh, great history, a very original car. I then decided to, after I bought the car, actually a funny story. I, I tried really hard to buy it off the owner and I was very open with him. And I said, if I buy the car, the one thing I want to do is return it to its uh, original color combination. And he was like, mm -hmm, mm hmm And I said, can you just imagine that primrose paint with the, all the bright work that's on the car? These early cars, by the way, the first 23 or 24 DB4 GTs are quite different. They have a different front bumper, a rounded bumper. They have different air intakes into the front bumper. Uh, they don't have any of the chunky aluminum bezel aluminium surround around the headlamp bezel. It's a very different, cleaner, more lightweight looking car. Um, anyway, I went off track and I said to him, I want to return it to its original color. And after he took my money, he then said to me, I got to tell you, Tom, I just can't imagine driving that car in a yellow GT. I can't imagine seeing that car in yellow or ever driving a yellow GT. He said, you know, I just totally disagree with you. And I was so excited and I have to say, I think this is the most fantastic DB4 GT I may have ever seen. 
The Aston Martin historian Stephen Archer ranks it as number one amongst all the GTs when he takes into account the um, original color combination, how original the car is, that it still retains its original body. It even retains its original Weber carburettors, not just its engine. It retains its original cylinder head. It, it's a very, very original car that's been perfectly restored by Spraytech, who are the best restorers for Aston Martin. Um, we are gonna be launching that car for sale probably in the springtime. We're gonna send it down to RS Williams, uh, to our friends down there, and they're just gonna give it one final tune because I just want to be absolutely satisfied that it is the finest GT on the planet. And I think that we will sell this car quite quickly. And I anticipate, expect, and hope that we will see this car straight away at some Concours events because what a stunning car and it really does deserve to be shown. Staying with Aston Martin. Now in pre-war Aston Martin world, this is as good as it gets. This is the ex Sir Malcolm Campbell, Aston Martin short chassis Le Mans. Just a fantastic car from everything about it. Born new in this color, in Sir Malcolm Campbell's color of Bluebird Blue. In its first year, it was upgraded the engine to Ulster specification. And when you take the car apart today, or when you carefully inspect it, everything about the car is so original. It has all the original body numbers all over the car. Um, it's got its original engine. It's got a, its original rear axle. You know, a really great car. We've agreed a sale on the car now. And this is a car that I think will turn out to be an amazing buy for the new owner. It's a huge, big part of Aston Martin's history. The ownership, not just Sir Malcolm Campbell, but since Sir Malcolm Campbell, it's been owned by just some great Aston Martin collectors over the years. Uh, we managed to get the car actually, to acquire the car from a fantastic couple in the north of England. Um, and you know, that was a little bit of a perk of my job, actually a huge perk of my job is meeting all these very different individuals from different walks of life. and. I have to say there isn't many people I've ever met that are a nicer couple than the home that this car came from. And, you know, we really enjoyed being part of it and really enjoyed both acquiring and selling the car. So that's a car that I'm gonna remember forever. Now, Aston Martins. If somebody said to you, what's the most important Aston Martin of all time? I guess people would probably respond and go a DBR1 but I would probably respond and say a DB3S because without a DB3S, there would be no DBR1. Aston Martin's most successful ever model. They raced competitively for six years. They were raced as a works car for five years from 53 to 58. And you know, just a very, very, very important car. Not many of them were ever produced. There was only 10 works cars and there was 20 customers cars produced. These two are really special. So this is a works car, chassis number two. Uh, this is a car that we actually sold last year and the buyer hasn't taken delivery of the car yet. Great history, um, driven by Roy Salvadori. Uh, it was then sold to Peter Collins. Um, was part of the Anthony Bamford collection, Lord Anthony Bamford collection, was part of the, um, uh, the John McCaw collection. It's just, the history of this car is just, you know, it's, you can't get any better. And we sold it to a fantastic home, um, a fantastic home that we hope one day he'll publicly show it. I would like to share with you who we um, sold it to, but that wouldn't be appropriate. And we have uh, much more discretion than that. Um, but we hope to be seeing it on some great of the world's events, world's rally events sometime soon. Um, this DB3S, this is the David Brown Coupe. So the DB3S Coupes, in period, they converted uh, two open cars to coupe form, fixed head coupe form for Le Mans. They found that they were in, unstable and then they converted those cars, they later converted those cars back to open configuration. But then 
at the end of the DB3S production on the customer cars, there were three coupes built, all for special people. One coupe was built for um, Sir Max Aitken, the owner of uh, the Daily Telegraph. The other uh, DB3S coupe was built for Ropner. And then there was this DB3S coupe that was built for David Brown himself. So for those of you who don't know much about Aston Martin, David Brown was the owner of Aston Martin. He was Mr. Aston Martin. He's the guy that really did put Aston Martin on the map. And this was his own personal car, chassis number 120. He owned the car from 1956 until 1958. The car was then sold to someone that I would describe as a semi-works driver, lady driver, which was very impressive. Uh, Gene Bloxham. So Gene Bloxham owned and drove some nearly all the great Aston Martins in that era. She bought this car in 1958. She raced the car at the likes of Goodwood, Silverstone, Alton Park. She, um, we've found some fantastic period images of her driving the car. Um, <laughs> It's amazing how it happens. We weren't aware at the time, but you know, we spent a lot of time researching the car and its history, and we found a couple of interesting things. Number one, her and her husband, coincidentally, owned both of these cars at the same time, and they raced against each other in both of these cars uh, whilst they owned them. And we've got some fantastic photos of them doing so, and to think they've been reunited some 60, three years later, I think, uh, I think is fantastic actually. We'd love to get part of their family to come and see it and see both the cars because I'm sure they've got some great period images themselves. Now, this is a car that we're going to start offering to clients soon. Um, it was born in, the color on the build records show it as being born in lavender. I know what color I think lavender is, but we are trying to obtain some period color photographs of the car when David Brown owned it between 1956 and 58. The only color, the only photographs we have of his ownership are black and white. And if anybody at all can help us with some color photos, you know, we would seriously appreciate it. You would be helping the car because it's a car that, because it was David Brown's, because of the history, it's so such a good car. It retains its original engine. It's the only DB3S coupe that still retains its original body fitted to the car today. Um, and the other DB3S coupe that is it still in its coupe um, conf original configuration, you know, that's gone to such a fantastic home that I don't think it will ever be sold. So this is kind of the only car that's in private ownership. Really interesting car that we may, we may um, return to its original color and we're looking forward to finding the right home for it. So. Nobody knows about that car yet, and we're gonna start offering it to people very soon. Formula One cars, I think we've touched upon before. You know, we've got here, we've got the Jackie Stewart 1970 Spanish Grand Prix winning March 701. We've got the Williams FW15C. We've got the Williams FW7, FW17. Um, just all winning cars, you know, two Grand Prix wins, three Grand Prix wins, one Grand Prix win. That's the one thing that you'll probably find with me and Grand Prix cars. I absolutely love them, but I really only ever like to put my money into cars that have won Grand Prix. I like Grand Prix winners, not cars that were also runs. And when you talk about Grand Prix winners, this is, <laughs> This is like the Grand Prix winning Ferrari. So this is the Ferrari that put Ferrari firmly back on the map, that brought the dominance back to Marinello. This car had six Grand Prix wins. This actual chassis, not the model. This actual car had six Grand Prix wins, including Monaco. It had four wins in 1975, two wins in 76. It was then put in a, um, a crate in a bonded warehouse for basically 40 years uh, until I bought the car a couple of years ago. I, if you put a DNA swab in there, you know, Nicky Loud was the only person to have ever driven it. And you can definitely, uh, it's just, it's completely original. You look at the, you look at the wear on the steering wheel and on the seats. 
on the seat, not seats. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it, it really is special. It's a car that should be in a museum. Um, you never know, maybe one day it will be in a museum, but uh, it's a car that is unrepeatable. So moving on, we've got uh, some of the 993 Porsches. I think I've shared with you before that I think these cars are really undervalued. They're cars that I've, I've definitely got quite a lot of nostalgia about. Um, you know, when I was growing up, the first car I ever sold actually uh, in my dad's business was a Porsche 993. And, uh, you know, I always remember being in the, you know, growing up around the cars. I know them really well, you know, whether it's a Carrera 4 or a Carrera 4S or a, this is a Turbo S. This is really special because this is the only right hand drive Turbo S in this color. I always say and always am very vocal about colors make cars. I noticed loads of other people use that phrase today, but, um, you know, I've always said that. And if you look around the showroom, whether it be the green 275s or the Primrose Yellow DB4 GT or the Ocean Jade 993 Turbo S, the Guards Red 993 RS, I just love vibrant colors um, or I love rare colors. You know, you see enough silver cars or black cars. You know, I like something that's exciting. Um, we then look at this. This is a car that's just came into stock. Uh, I bought this in New York, uh, 300 SL Roadster, aluminium block, disc brakes. So they made quite a few Roadsters in period. However, the very last of the production line, they uh, introduced the disc brakes and then they introduced the disc brakes and the aluminium block. The aluminium block completely transforms the car. It's so much lighter for obvious reasons, it being made out of aluminium. It's, it's a much nicer car to drive, a much more nimble car to drive. Not many of the aluminium block cars um, still retain their original matching numbers engine. And that's why if you ever look at auction results and you'll see that some 300 SL Roadsters, a run of the mill car, just an, a 1958 300 SL Roadster and also ran is like a million dollars, $1.1 million. And then you'll suddenly see a result for a car that is $3 million or $3.2 million. And a lot of people ask me the question, say, Tom, I don't get it. They look the same. Why is one, you know, so much more than the other? And that's because of the alloy block disc brake and the matching number status. Very few cars exist like that. This is one of them. This is a car that is in such beautiful condition. It's been in long-term ownership. It's had one owner for the last, 34 years really good friend of mine in new york good client but probably a better friend than a client um i never thought he would sell the car and then i ended up buying two cars off of him recently recently which was this and a european spec ferrari daytona spider um and the original color was white with a black hard top it still has the hard top it's next door and even though it's in such good condition, I just think because it's one of those few cars that retains its original matching numbers engine, its original body, it would be good to make it jewelry-like condition-wise, you know, just perfectly restored and make it its, return it to its original color combination. I think it will add quite a lot of value. It will probably take us 18 months and it will probably cost an arm and a leg but I'm pretty certain we're going to do it. So watch this space. And if it goes into restoration, I'm sure we'll keep you all updated. More Porsches. We sold this beautiful right-hand drive 911 2.4 S yesterday. A really beautiful car. Um, I actually sold the car only about 14 months ago. And I was surprised that the gentleman who we sold it to a really nice guy so i don't use that terminology gentleman loosely um, i was surprised that he actually decided to sell the car and we basically gave him all of his money back um, it's a car that i know it's very hard to find cars like this you know it, cars that have still got their matching number status a right hand drive 2.4 s is quite rare and when you compare them to the price of a 2.7 rs i think they look you know, extremely good value for money. Again, I'm not going to use that word cheap. I'm always conscious never to use the word cheap, um, but I think it's great value for money. 
997 GT2 RS, right-hand drive, only 3,000 miles from new. You know, really, really special car, really good car. Um, and then we're gonna move on to something that we're gonna share with you that we're probably gonna make an announcement on in the next few days anyway, so why not share it here first? Jaguar. Jaguar XKSS chassis number 707. This is a spectacular example of what is one of the original Jaguar XKSSs. Only 16 of these cars were ever produced. I'm proud to say that I know them really well because many years ago, um, about oh, six years ago, we were given a remit from a very good client and he said, I wanna buy an XKSS. And we said, you know the rule, if you're gonna buy an XKSS, we've got to get you a good one. And I carefully studied, researched every single one of the 16 cars. And this is top draw. This is definitely, certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, in the top three. And the, those top three cars for me is the Steve McQueen XKSS because it's the Steve McQueen car. The, you know, the most original of all of them is the car that we sold about a year ago or 18 months ago, which is chassis number 728. And then there's this car, chassis number 707. Really good history. Um, I had been trying to buy this car for about the last five years and was really proud to have got it bought. And we have sold the car without doing any type of advertising, marketing, um, it's going to a very special collection, one of our favorite collections. Um, and it's just, it's just been freshly detailed today, actually. And it's, uh, I think it gets collected tomorrow. So it's a really special car, really special announcement. I am so proud to say that we've sold two, not just two of the original 16 XKSSs. And I don't even know if any dealer can claim that they've actually physically bought and sold two of the original 16 cars, um, but we've sold two of the top three cars. So now we're on to the Peterson Museum. We're gonna to have to somehow see if we can convince them to sell Steve McQueen's, which I think is highly unlikely, um, but you know, I'm patient. So moving on, this is a car that we are, we're not gonna talk much on tonight actually, because it's pretty special. Andy, camera this way, Andy, camera this way. Um, we're not going to talk about much of that car tonight because we're probably, we're, it's a car that we've only just acquired and we're going to spend, when we get a car into stock, we end up spending probably two months carefully researching it. You know, we don't want to offer the car for sale without knowing everything about it, warts and all, find out, uncover anything that's interesting about the car, um, any of the car's possible attributes and also again as I say warts and all if there's anything because we can't spend that time it's impossible before we make a decision on whether we acquire the car or not so it's always you know we have to know if it what its current status is i.e it's matching number status but we have to then and any known negatives in its history but we then also have to take um small risk and when we get a car for sale we have to make sure that we represent it accurately so we will then go and spend unlike any other dealer a couple of months carefully researching it so let's uh, let's share more with you on that car in in due course 488 spider means nothing to me modern car i'd be a terrible salesman of it because uh, i've completely gone off of modern cars really unless they're modern hypercars or supercars, not very collectible, will probably be worth less than six months, actually will definitely be worth less than six months than it is today. Um, that's why, uh, you know, I suppose my passion isn't really there for them, but we do sell them. Everyone drives a modern car. And if you talk about depreciating modern cars, Rolls-Royce Cullinan, we don't need to say any more. Um, now, we're gonna have a quick look next door because around here at the moment, it's absolutely a sweet shop. I, you know, I've filmed this this evening because this is what I normally do every night when all of the staff go home. I like to have a walk around like I'm a kid in a sweet shop or just to remind myself and pinch myself and say, Tom, do you realize the cars that we've got at the moment, the cars that 
what my profession is built around, what my business is built around, and every night I get excited about it. Nobody probably realizes that, um, but I do, and I'm gonna share with you a couple of other things. If you just think about it, we're talking Jaguar XKSS. We're talking, you know, the best DB4 GT probably there is. You know, great alloy block 300 SL Roadster. Eric Clapton's right-hand drive four cam, the Competition 275. You know, a Bentley blower, probably the best Bentley blower. DB4 Zigato. DB4 Zigato, this is a car, left-hand drive. We're not gonna to share too much on it tonight. We're just gonna say it's one of the original 19 DB4 Zigatos, and it's a car that we're going to be putting straight into restoration. And it's a car that we'll probably share with you again in two years time. Otherwise in here, we've just got a lot of cars that are waiting to be delivered to clients that are sold. Veyron, Porsche 2.7 RS, really cool Dino actually, a fantastic Dino. I don't know if you saw anything on social media, but that Dino has um, been having work done at Bonini and Cremonini in Italy. It's original color of Marone. It's stunning, very, very original. A car that I bought in the US and I've sold back to the US. And then what about this car? Now this is super interesting. Does anybody know what the Aston Martin Ogle is? Again, it's only just arrived into stock. We, I'm not gonna share too much with you this evening, but I'm just gonna tell you that 1972 Aston Martin, head up display. A lot of you thought that was first introduced in something like 2012, but no, believe it or not, 1972. This is a three-seater with the rear seat facing on an angle and a full glass roof. And then to the rear of the car, Andy, try and come and capture this. You have 22 rear tail lights. And the, of the rear tail lights, you have 10 brake lights on the bottom row. The harder you brake, the more of the lights that come on. Just, just a real design cue built by Ogle. It was um, first built for the 1972 um, Canadian Motor Show, where the organizers wanted a British star car attraction. And it's known as the Sotheby Special because Sotheby, not the auction house, Sotheby, the um, tobacco cigarette company, they sponsored the project. These cars cost 28,000 pounds each. They only ever built, well, they started off, they built one car for the show, which wasn't a real road registered, road legal, nor running example. And it had plexiglass windows. It was just purely a show car. Then they had this car, which was the only road legal, road registered, full running example. And then there was a lady who watched a TV program. I think it was on I don't know, I want to say Blue Peter, but it wasn't Blue Peter, uh, a BBC programme um, in period, and he fell, she fell in love and she called Aston Martin up and she said, I want one of those cars. And Aston Martin said, that's kind of tough because there was only really one built and that sold. And then she paid an absolute arm and a leg for what is basically the third but replica version. So this is the only real car that was ever produced. The history of it, it was, um, it was originally born in blue and it had an oversized Aston Martin badge, humongous Aston Martin badge here uh, with a gold pinstripe where we have this beige pinstripe today. It was a gold pinstripe um, down the side, running down the full length of the car. Uh, and I would love to put it back to that original color combination. It then, within a year of its life, Sotheby, um, the tobacco company also had Embassy as one of their brands and the Embassy Grand Prix Formula One team at that time was run by Graham Hill, it was his team and then this car was converted for to use as a promotional uh, purpose for his Formula One team and it was then white with a red stripe down the middle. Uh, we've got great period images of it. You'll see today it still has Graham Hill's name on the side and then it's been part of what is probably the most important Aston Martin collection on the planet for the last, I don't know, 25 years. So we're very proud to have managed to acquire it. Um, and I think 
we're going to choose we're going to be in the fortunate position to be able to choose who we're going to sell this car to because i think it's a really um special part of aston martin's history it isn't a humongously expensive car it's not like the price of an xkss or a db4 zagato or a bentley blower you know the car is very reasonably priced it needs recommissioning and then you've got a real show car that should get you an entry ticket to just about anywhere we have some more Aston Martins here, V600 Le Mans, V8 Oscar India, DBAR1. Uh, we've got a great Mercedes 500 SL that we're just about to put for sale on the end. This is our like back of show detailing area, by the way. Um, detailing, storage, and where the cars are um, situated, ready to be delivered. Um, 7,000 miles from new expatric collection great car we're probably going to put it for sale for seventy-five thousand pounds and at seventy-five thousand pounds i think that's extremely good value for money for someone so i hope you've enjoyed the walk around visit here today uh, i've shared with you a lot of things that we have in stock giving you some backgrounds to their history and we've got you can see we've got so many exciting cars here and over the next couple of years, some of the cars that you will see here will either be in restoration or you'll see them be eventually be officially and publicly presented for sale. And uh, we, uh, we look forward to sharing them with you then.